Chernobyl, besides Fukushima, was the worst nuclear incident in the modern history. But did you know that there were two more occasions between 1978 and 1983 where a whole city could have been become inhabitable? Even worse, nobody knew what continent or what region would be affected. The threat of nuclear debris raining back to Earth was in the news for months and weeks. People in Ireland, Belgium, Germany and other European countries were asked to stay inside the house because of the risk of higher radiation exposure. I remember one of our neighbors taking measurements in our backyard. But the threatening was not coming of a nuclear missile or warhead. It came from space. The name was Cosmos 954 and Cosmos 1402 two Soviet low-orbiting spy satellites that got out of control. The Cosmos satellites were part of the program ROSAT, an array of Soviet-launched spy sats built to monitor ocean traffic, such as submarines and NATO vessels. What had been kept secret until the incidents was that these satellites were powered by a nuclear reactor. Each satellite carried 110 pounds or 50 kilograms of uranium-235 that was used to power a fission reactor, an experimental lightweight reactor that generated about 3 kilowatts used to power the radar antenna. Cosmos 954 was launched on September 8 in 1977 from Baikonur on a Cyclone 2 carrier rocket and was brought into orbit of only 259 kilometers or 161 miles. In December of 1977 the satellite has deviated from its designed orbit and its flight path was becoming increasingly erratic. Cosmos 954 started to change its altitude up to 50 miles of course Later that month, the North American Aerospace Defense Command noticed Cosmos 954 abnormal maneuvers. In secret meetings, Soviet officials warned their US counterparts that they had lost control over the vehicle and that the system which was intended to propel the spent reactor core into a safe dispersal orbit had failed. On January 24, 1978, Cosmos 954 re-entered the Earth's atmosphere while traveling on a northeastward track over West Canada. At first the USSR claimed that the satellite had been completely destroyed during re-entry, but later searches showed debris from the 3.8 ton satellite have been deposited on uninhabited Canadian territory along a 600 mile or 1000 kilometer path from Great Slave Lake to Baker Lake. It took around 10 months for the Canadian authorities to recover the radioactive debris. They were ultimately able to recover 12 large pieces of the satellite. 10 of the fragments recovered were radioactive. The pieces displayed radioactivity of up to 1.1 sieverts per hour, yet they only comprised an estimated 1% of the fuel. One fragment had a devastating radiation level of 500 Röntgen per hour. Cosmos 954 scattered radioactivity over almost 48,000 square miles, and the USSR had to pay Canada 10 million dollars for the damage. After an incident of this magnitude, you would think that this might be the last nuclear satellite ever shot into orbit. But this was not the case. Between 1967 and 2019, around 80 nuclear-powered satellites and probes have been launched to orbit. Six of them are known to be fallen back to Earth. But after the incident with Cosmos 954, future Soviet Rosat satellites were modified with an ejection system for their nuclear reactors. This ejection system would allow the reactor section to be ejected in the event of a malfunction or at the end of the satellite's surface life, so the radioactive core could be placed in a dispersal orbit of about a thousand kilometers, where the fuel would remain for 500 years. On 28th of December 1982, only five years later, the ejection system in Cosmos 1402 failed. Cosmos 1402 was launched only a few months earlier in that year, in August 1982. Why the Russians needed to remotely destroy Cosmos 1402 after only five months of operation is unknown. What we know is that firing the booster engine of the reactor's ejection system caused an explosion. Ripping 1402 apart in three major uncontrollable pieces, the reactor with its booster engine the instrument section of the satellite with the extended second stage of the launch vehicle and the radar antenna. Sure this happening was not unwatched and triggered many countries to place emergency response teams on high alert. 
The North American Aerospace Defense Command, which tracks all space traffic, reported that the main body of the satellite was descending at a rate of 4.4 miles a day. The calculated orbit ranged from a high of 118 miles to a low of 113 miles. The spacecraft should begin encountering the Earth's atmosphere at an altitude of around 100 miles. If the uranium core were to explode or shatter in the atmosphere and radioactive fragments fell near a populated area, the resulting nuclear contamination could have caused a significant and widespread hazard. The Soviet engineers clarified that they had redesigned the reactor to completely burn up in the atmosphere so that nothing would reach the ground. But this information was not verified by other countries at this time. Cosmos 1402 was following an orbital course that takes it over nearly all of the Earth's populated lands at least once a day. The radio antenna re-entered the atmosphere only two days after the incident and burned up completely in the atmosphere. Newspapers all over the world started speculating where the satellite and most importantly the fuel core may hit over the next weeks. At a briefing in Washington, Assistant Secretary of Defense for Public Affairs Henry Caddo said that the American tracking network would not be able to predict any certainty where the satellite might come down, but claimed that given to the satellite orbital path, there was a 70% probability that Cosmos 1402 would fall in the open ocean. A document released under the 30-year rule stated that it was not known at the time where the satellite would land. There was a 1 in 10,000 chance that it would fall over Ireland. Sweden's nuclear emergency surveillance team kept 1,000 people and 20 aircraft on standby. France called up 22 mobile civil defense units, supplemented by 400 teams of firemen and policemen equipped with radioactivity detectors. West Germany mobilized helicopters and ground vehicles to help to clear up any contamination. Over the days, the path became clearer and clearer, and the impact zone was narrowed down more and more. The main satellite bus of Cosmos 1402 re-entered the Earth's atmosphere on January 23, 1983. It appeared over Great Britain at 5.24 pm and was visible for about a minute as it crossed Britain on a path from the southwest to the northeast. At a height of 95.6 miles, eyewitnesses reported not seeing any burning up occurring. Oman declared a full state of alert against a possible shower of debris from the spacecraft. The United Arab Emirates placed all naval, air force and army units on alert. Russia was expected to send ships and reconnaissance jets from South Yemen, where they maintain a military presence. Sri Lanka police sent out sightseers from a coconut plantation, where an unidentified object hurtled down to the ground in the evening. The object was spotted by two schoolboys, who said it looked like a ball of fire. 1402 ended up south of Diago de Gracia in the Indian Ocean. No debris were recovered, but it is believed that the satellite disintegrated, then crashed into the sea. Fifteen days later, the world held their breath as the reactor core came closer and closer to re-entry. On February 7, 1983, the reactor core, or what was left of it, crashed into the Atlantic Ocean, near Ascension Island. The reactor is believed to have completely burned up into particles and dispersed to safe levels of atomic radioactivity. Today, around 31 nuclear satellites remain orbiting over our heads, mostly Soviet Cosmos satellites out of the 1970s and 80s. Let's hope they will remain there for a long, long time. If you like those videos, please give me a thumbs up or a thumbs down if you don't like it. Consider to subscribe and I see you soon. Until then, see ya.